Hey y'all, Merry Christmas. It's Leslie with Fat Cat Flossing and welcome back to my crazy. This is my channel about cross stitch and um, wool applique and needlework, whatever I happen to be doing. A little about my crazy life and my crazy cats. Um, but anyway, today is Monday. I think it's December 20th. I know it's 2021. Yay me. Um, and this is floss tube number 123. And I have so much to show y'all today. Um, it's been very busy around here. I have not gotten done anywhere near what I needed to get done. But I hope um, that you'll enjoy what I do have to show you. And I'm so excited that you're here to visit with me again, whether this is your first time stopping by or if, um, if you're a returning crazy person and you've put up with my antics for a while. Um... Okay, things to talk about. My in-laws are much better. They are almost completely over COVID. My mother-in-law is pretty much back to normal. My father-in-law is doing much, much better. Um, he saw the doctor the end of last week, and he thinks he may be able to come off his supplemental oxygen, and that is wonderful news because Dad hates being tied down to anything. So thank you all so much for all your prayers for them. They are much, much appreciated. Um... I'm trying to think of what else I need to tell you. <laughs> um, we went to Little Rock yesterday. I was supposed to go last Wednesday to take a kitten to meet his new mommy at the airport and fly home to Atlanta. But unfortunately, new mommy got sick and couldn't come last Wednesday. So we went yesterday, uh, which meant I didn't get to go visit my friends at the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, which is a wonderful shop. But Anne did mail me a couple things that I'll show you after a while. Um... And I, since we um, went yesterday, the antique mall that has the um, wool sh shop in it, Tinka's Wool Cupboard, uh, was open and I picked up a couple of things there I'll also show you. Um, Kitty got off and got home to Atlanta safely. They're happy with him. This is about to be the start of a crazy week for me. I have three additional litters due. And if you didn't know, I breed and show Berman cats. Um, and it's a little unusual to have babies do this early in the season. Typically, they start, start going into heat around the winter solstice. But I had three girls who were um, early off the bat this time. So Prissy is actually due tomorrow. And Lottie is due on Christmas Eve. And Fairy is due on the 27th. Now, those dates are all calculated from the first day that they had the visit with the stud boy. So each one of them could be three to five days later than that, just depending on when they actually got bred. Um, but I set my alarm and get up every one to two hours to check on them when I know that they're due. So probably not going to be a lot of sleep during Christmas week for me. <laughs> but that's okay. I love my babies and I don't mind doing that. Well, I hate losing sleep, but you know, it is what it is. I choose to do it. Um, so I guess that's enough chit chat for me. Let me show you what I've gotten done. I have one, um, I guess I'll call it an almost FFO. This is from Lizzie Kate. This is a little mystery sampler. And it was released in three parts several years ago. I want to say around 2015, but that, you know, it's a guess. Around that time. Um, and I bought this at the Silver Needle several years ago. And it was a mania start for me, I believe, in 2019. And I finally finished it up last week and got the beads and the buttons on it. There's a bee button here and I think a ladybug button here and some other buttons in these flowers and then some miscellaneous beads. I did not do it on the call for. The call for was kind of a yellowish fabric and I wasn't a huge fan. So this is 32 count. Picture this plus quartz. These are the called for flosses. Um, and I think I used almost all the call for. I don't, I don't think I substituted. I may have substituted a DMC or two for some things I didn't have. Um, it's not quite as vibrant on the quartz. There would have been better color contrast on that yellowish fabric, but it's me. Um, so I changed everything. This is, um, a cheapo frame. It's plastic. I think I paid $4 for this at an antique mall in Jackson, Tennessee a few weeks ago. Um, and I've got it stuck in here right now. It's pinned and laced. 
I, I will probably leave it in this frame, um, but my dilemmas are two. The color of this frame, or the, I'm sorry, the matte, actually closely matches. There's here and like every other little stitch here and down at the bottom. There's some um, eucalyptus is the name of the floss in there. And the matte color actually very closely matches that eucalyptus color. I'm not sure that the matte goes well with the overall piece. So do I take, take it apart? It's, and it's just stuck in there. It's not, you know, I can easily take it apart. I haven't put backing paper or anything on it. Um, so I've been, it's sat here on my desk for about a week now and I've been cogitating on whether I want to paint that mat. I am definitely going to put some antiquing wax on this frame. It's a fairly bright gold. It looks fairly plastic because it is. Um, but I am going to put some antiquing wax, I think, on the frame. Um, but let me know about the color, what y'all think about the color of the mat. I think my option for painting it, if I were to paint it, would probably be this color of the letters here, which is, I want to say that's Heather. Gentle Arts Heather, I think. I'm not positive about that without pulling out the flosses. Well, I guess I can tell you that. Since I have the floss right here. Weeks, Purple Haze, I lied. Yeah, Weeks Purple Haze is that purple floss. Um, and the one that's the color of the matte is Weeks Verdigree. Hmm. I don't think that's what I, what I said it was, but that's what it is, is Weeks Verdigree. Anyway, let me know if you think I need to change that matte color. It's going to sit here on my desk and I'm going to cogitate on it a little bit. I don't think I'm particularly happy with it as is, so I probably will change it. But I'm very happy with how the stitching turned out. I think it's really cute. And I love what it says because if you're waiting for tomorrow to come or if you're dwelling on the past um, and are unhappy about the past and placing all your um, eggs in tomorrow's basket, you need to wake up and realize you need to live for today. So that's my one and only, well, almost fully finished. Now, I have several things. I had these all, these, I think I showed this one I know last week. This is Winter Gathering from Brenda Gervais, and I did not do the bottom part of the basket. But I have picked out, I buy layer cakes, and this is the fabric I have picked out to finish this. I'm going to try to do it into kind of a little half circle pin pillow. Um Cross your fingers. We'll see how that goes. I don't know that I've done a circular or semicircular pillow. And then this is, I think, I don't remember if it's Winter Joy or Cardinal Joy from Stitching with the Housewives. And this is what I've got picked out so far to go with it. To match that cardinal. And hopefully I will get these done this week. And this one is Redbird's Spring Pin Keep from Redbird Designs. I finished this one last year, I think. Um, and this is a fabric that kind of matches that teal and it's kind of cool because it's got eggs on it. So hopefully I will get those done and those can go um, out as part of my winter slash spring's coming kind of display. I did um, get a number of finishes because I really am trying to get, I'm sorry, people are coming and going right in front of my house. So I keep looking at the window. Um, I got a number of finishes, although I did not get them as finished as I needed to, um, especially in the case of, sorry if that thing's sliding off here. This is Parker's Stocking from Shepherd's Bush. And I did this for my grandson and I meant to get him it sent to him for Christmas this year. You know what? It's going to end up being for Christmas next year because I just did. I, it's finished. I'm done with the stitching and it came out very cute. And I got all the beads and buttons and embellishments added. And I'm very happy with the way it finished out. And it's stitched. This is an 18 count. I think it's, 
I don't know if it's natural or dirty linen. I don't think it's as dark as dirty, but it's an, it's whatever the call for is. Uh, and it's an 18 count. And it's that real stiff, crunchy linen that I hate stitching on. It did soften up some as I worked with it. And this stitch with the called for um, DMC. I did not, in, it's number five pearl cotton. I will probably not use a whole lot of pearl cotton for other things because I don't typically stitch on larger count fabrics. So I just went with the DMC pearl cotton instead of in the in investing in the weeks, um, which would probably have made it a little bit more dynamic, but you know, I still think it's cute even if it's done in DMC and not weeks. I did change my white to B5200 versus just um, Blanc because I wanted really white on here so it would pop. And I'm very happy with the way that came out. And at some point I will um, get my courage up and finish it into the stocking shape. Not excited about that. Oh, thank you for everybody who recommended Vana's tutorial. I am going to be watching that again. Um, I've seen it a long time ago, but I'm going to watch it again to see how to finish that. And y'all, my stacks have stacks here. I'm not sure where to put everything. And this pattern is going to be a giveaway in a little bit here. So hang tight. Okie dokie. Next of my finishes. And these are not in order. They're just whatever order the project bags are in here. They're not in the order that I actually finished them. This is a freebie from, um, oh, my doorbell's going to ring in a minute, which means my dogs are going to bark because FedEx is here to deliver my Chewy order. Go figure. I get a lot of stuff from Chewy. This is a uh, Forest Snowman, I believe is the name of it, from Doreen Jones. This is a freebie. If you go to her Facebook page, which I believe is Doreen, D-U-R-E-N-E, -E, Jones Cross Stitch, um, and look back through there, you can find this little freebie. And I saw this, and I just thought it was really cute. I love those, those trees. And I think I started this on Friday. And finished it on Saturday. So there's my version of that. It's done on, this is 36 count uh, fiber on a whim heather. And this is true. It looks gray when I bring it up close. But really, it's a purpley gray. Or a grayish purple. Um, and I'll tell you about why I have this fabric when we get to haul in a little bit. But I'm super happy with how they came out. And they're also going to be finished into a little pillow. Um, probably this coming week when I get started on that. <laughs> Can you go see what they want? Oh, never mind. He left. Sorry, talking to my husband. He's back over there behind me working. Anyway, I'm going to also give away this pattern. It's a freebie. You can go download your own, but if somebody wants to save your printer and ink, this will be a giveaway here in a little bit also. Okay. So, one more down. Where to put it? Then, this is one I started... I kind of think this was also a 2019 Mania start, but been a while anyway. Bovinia from Plum Street Samplers. And like I said, I started this quite a while back. I, I believe it was Mania 2019. Couldn't swear to it. But I pulled her out and got her finished. And I did not have a whole lot done on this. I think I had the cow's face and some of this vine here done. And so I finished the rest of it. Um, this is done with mostly the call for flosses. I did change a couple of them. Like I know the grass is done in a Victorian motto because I have lots and lots of Victorian motto and it comes on 20 yard in 20 yard skeins. So um, when there's a big block of color, I like to use that when I can. But I'm super happy with how that came out. I think it's very cute. This one I, I'm debating. I think I'm going to frame this one. Um, on my kitchen wall, I've got the Little Sheep Virtues that I did a couple of years ago and another um, Valley Sheep piece. So I think my kitchen wall is going to be my farm animal wall. So I'm going to add a cow. But I'm very happy with how she came out. I think she's really cute. 
Um, I don't know if I said so. This is 36 count R&R &R Winter Brew. And again, almost all the call for flosses. Sorry, my stacks have stacks. And then, this one, I think I started this in the spring. This one hasn't been around that long. This is Hello Winter from Plum Street Samplers. And it was a very Plum Street Samplers intensive couple of weeks for me. But this is Hello Winter. Another sheep. I like sheep. With a cardinal on it. Love cardinals. I think that this is... I don't remember if it's a 36 or a 40. And I believe this is my little dove from XG Designs. Did I write it down? Because that would have been like smart, so I probably did not. Yep, my little dove, who knew? I actually did think I had to write something down. 36 count, my little dove from XG Designs. This is none of the call for. These are silks from my stash. And I did change the call for colors quite a bit. These were more of a I don't know, I think kind of a tan color. Well, these were a very light pink. This was a darker red, and I just stitched it to suit me. I have so many errors in this, y'all. None of the leaves or the berries or anything are where they're supposed to be. I just, you know, there was a lot of the seat of my pants on this one. <laughs> but it's cute. I like it, and I will probably frame this. I did leave off the Hello Winter in case I decided I wanted to leave it out. Um... It's got the snowflakes on it, but I don't think it really just screams winter. So, we'll see. Anyway, happy with it. Glad to have it finished. Did y'all notice I ironed this stuff? Who knew it was possible? And, again, that was none of the call for flosses on those because it's, we're just silks from my stash. Okay. Had to move a stack because it was about to hit the floor. This one... I believe I started this last spring also. This is Cereal Bowl Collection of Sampler Lessons, number one, from Plum Street Samplers. And this is done on a 40 count, it's just Zweigart White. And none of the call for, I think I use mostly color and cotton floss for my stash on this one. And I did change the wording um, down at the bottom the pattern calls for it to say, make use of present time. And I just liked that pink house. So I made it home sweet home. And y'all, I graphed this out and I counted and I counted and I counted and then I counted some more. And I still managed to jack it up. There are two more spaces here than here. But it's just going to be two more spaces. I'm, I'm not ripping it out and doing it again. And I'm happy with it. And I will frame this one and put it on the wall. Although, if that's my house, the lady living in it, she should be a little bit wider than that. <laughs> but anyway, there's my sampler bowl selection. Sampler. Cereal bowl collection of sampler lessons, lesson number one. There. I did it. And then my last finish is kind of a, sort of a finish. Well, it's a finish of this pattern. She Peep from Plum Street Samplers. I told y'all I was on a Plum Street Samplers roll. And I have previously completed Goat Load, which I started for Emily C.'s birthday sale, I think, three years ago. And I also completed um, Hen Pack. And I am doing these all together on one larger piece of linen. So this is the one, goat load, I'm sorry, sheep heap here on the end is the one that I just finished. And there's the other two. And I'm going to add on the end here, I'm going to add cow pile and snort stack. So um, I just need to pull a few more flosses. That one has more blue in it than what I have pulled out. These are not using, this is almost all uh, miscellaneous floss from my stash, mostly Victorian Motto. 
Not many of the call for on this. Uh, the linen is a 36 count honey from Hand Dyed Happiness on Etsy. I do not believe she is dyeing linen anymore, which is a shame because this is a beautiful linen and it is an absolute pleasure to stitch with. It's a 36 count. Um, but I'm super happy with my little sheepies there. I really like sheep. My dad raised cattle, not sheep. Possibly that's why I like sheep. But I think it's going to be very cute. And this will go also on my farm animal wall in the kitchen when I get that done. That is kind of a goal for 2022 is to try to get those other two patterns and get that finished. Oh, so many things. Oh, I'm not finished with that, am I? One more to show you. It's in the same bag because it's, again, another Plum Street Sampler's one of her stacks. This is Tired Trio, also from Plum Street Sampler's. And here's where I am on this one. This is, I don't remember. I believe it's a picture of this plus linen. It's a 40 count. Um, it's a little tight. I stitch in hand. Oh, I'm showing you the back, y'all. I'm sorry. There we go. That looks better. I stitch in hand. So stitching um, on 40 count sometimes is a little tight for me, depending um, on the linen, you know, with getting the needle through, doing the sewing method. Um, and I was doing the faces one over one, which is about to drive me to drink. I'm not quite done with his little face here. I am not enjoying stitching on this one. I think I'm going to try to finish it because, you know, I'm probably 60% done with it, but I really have to be in the mood to work on that one. It, um, that one, that one's a challenge for me. So anyway, but I'm also not done with any of the call for just miscellaneous flosses from my stash. Sorry, my stacks are falling. Okay, a couple more and then we'll, we'll be done with the whips anyway. This is, I started this in the Sal, um, hashtag, I think Tudor B Sal, I think. Started this back in the spring. I did real well. I got most of the bee done and then I kind of lost steam. Um, but anyway, Tudor Bee from the Blue Flower. And there's my progress. And what I got done um, this time when I pulled this out the other night was I got the white filled in in the honeycomb. I got. Um, Oh, these two little motifs on either side of the bee, and then a couple of the little flower buds, um, although I'm not done with that one. But anyway, I did make a little progress on it. I was really tired, and I don't do well when I'm tired stitching things that are kind of random, like, you know, the vine. If I stitch something that's pretty structured, I can be a little more tired. Um, but when I'm stitching something kind of random like that vine, I don't do well when I'm tired. So I had to put this away. But I would like to pull this out and hopefully get a finish on it. This one may be one I try to get finished before the end of the year. We'll see how that goes. I always say, I want to do this. I'm going to keep working on that. And then I never do it. So we'll see. But that that's one that is a good possibility for me to keep working on. And then the last thing I think that I worked on was this one. This is the Checkerboard Stag Sampler from Samplers Remembered. And I saw Julie McConnell. I'm sorry for the glare, y'all. We're in front of the window. Um, Julie McConnell has this stitched and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was so, so pretty. And so I pulled this out. I don't know. I think it was the first thing I stitched on after my last floss tube, if that makes any sense. So about three weeks, two and a half weeks ago. And I had the center vase done and I had a start on stag number one, but I finished stag number two. I put the bouquet in, oh, that is stitched there. It's hard to see. Um, put the bouquet in both their mouths, backstitched them. There's a lot of backstitching on, on the stags. And I did this flourish up here. 
I don't think I had this done. I think I added that also. So all that is left on this one is on either side, there are these very large motifs that are done entire, almost entirely in satin stitch. So when I pull it out again, it's going to be satin stitch palooza to try to get those finished. But I um, was happy with the progress I made on that. Well, I think there's one more little strip of um, cross stitch up there at the top, maybe. But this is so happy with how it looks. I've been almost tempted to just quit here. Um, but I already did this piece over here, so now there needs to be something below it. Super happy with that. Again, um, this is a, it's a 36 count. I don't, it may be Heartland. I'll have to look back and see. If you need to know, let me know. Um, and then just miscellaneous silks I pulled from my, my silk stash. And I'm super happy with how that's looking. I think it's really pretty. So that's what I worked on for the last two and a half weeks. So I did get quite a bit done. I just didn't get a lot done on like finishing that stocking. Um, I tip, I do 90% of my stitching in the evening. I get two to three hours in the evening to stitch. Um, whereas I do finishing work, like I should have finished that stocking. Um, I typically do that during the day. Um, but I was super surprised on that stocking. It took me three days of working, you know, at least a couple hours in here to do the beading on it. it took me a lot longer than I thought it would to do that. And then I just kind of ran out of time. So it is what it is. Um, but I did accomplish a lot of other things. So I'm happy with those. And y'all excuse me while I get a drink real, real quick. Okay. What else do I have to tell y'all about? I have to look at my list because you know I don't have a brain. Okay. Haul. I had a little bit of haul. Actually, I had a lot of haul, but the biggest part of it is my Christmas present. We'll cover that in a minute. You know, I mentioned that we went to the airport. Um, I was supposed to go last Wednesday, so I was really, really looking forward to um, going visiting my friends at the Shepherd's Needle. And instead, I had to go yesterday, and they're not open on Sundays and Mondays. So, uh, I was out of thread drops. So, Anne, mail, I called her, and she mailed me some thread drops. And I was worried that I was going to run out of, I started that black sampler, pomegranate sampler from Fox and Rabbit, I believe. I thought I, I might not have enough gray, so she sent me another skein of the gray also. And then... My Silks of the Month from um, Joe at Silks for You came. And they are a lovely collection of from pale pink to very hot pink. And then kind of a variegated one in, in between there. So those are pretty. Joe does a great job. Her website is silks, S I L K S, the number four, the letter U.com. She is in Australia, and it is $21 for five 10-yard skeins or 10-meter skeins of six-stranded silk. She does a beautiful job. Um, I think the club is full right now, but if you email her, she will put you on a list, waiting list for that. Okay. So, instead of being able to go to Little Rock last Wednesday to the airport, we went yesterday. And the lady who was flying, this poor lady, first she was sick on Wednesday and couldn't come. And then yesterday her flight got delayed a couple hours. So we had some time to kill. And we stopped at, um, it's the Crystal Hill Antique Mall um, in North Little Rock. It's on Crystal Hill Road, I believe. It's right off of I-40. And we stopped there and that's where Tinka's Wool Cupboard is located. These are wool fat quarters. They were $7 a piece. She has good prices. And this is, I'm going to do a snowman applique for my grandson for January. And if y'all, does wool come in a pure white? This is an egg shelly color. It's not a super white white. It'll be fine, but it's not a bright white. But I don't know that I've ever seen really a bright white wool. Does it come in bright white? Let me know if you know. And then thinking about um, some Valentine's stuff, I got, I thought this was a really pretty red. That was it. 
two fat quarters of wool. And then um, the biggest part of my haul was my Christmas present. And I obviously have no problem spending money. I am real good at spending money. I'm not real good at saving money. I'm very good at spending it. But I just have a constitutional aversion to spending huge amounts of money on patterns. And I could not, I've been wanting to do this for a while. And I just haven't been able to bring myself to pull the trigger on it. So Steve asked me what I wanted for Christmas. And I said, okay, I know what I want. This is Serenity Harbor. And I'm sorry, it's just a printout from my printer because I downloaded the PDFs. Serenity Harbor from By the Bay. It is such a pretty, pretty piece. I, If you watch Jan Hicks, and if you don't, you should. Several years ago, she did um, Harbor Haven, also from By the Bay. And I love that piece. But both of those pieces, this one and um, By the Bay, not By the Bay, Harbor Haven, were sitch alongs in a series of however many patterns. There were 12 of these, I think. Anyway, the total price of this one was 75. The total price of the other one was 120, and I could not make myself spend $120 on a pattern. I just couldn't do it. As much as, as beautiful as it is, and someday maybe, you know, I'll have a windfall and choose to do that, but today was not that day. So I got this. It's a PDF download. And then I got, I had to get a fat half. This is um, Heather from Fiber on a Whim. And it's very pretty. It's looking more blue there. It is, it is definitely purple. It is not blue. It is not gray. It is purple. Now, it's not a vibrant purple. It's not an in-your-face color. That's a little truer there, but it is very pretty, and I wanted some contrast with um, the white the, on the call for linen. It's hard to see that there are birds and clouds up here, and I wanted something to make that pop a little bit more, and then the bottom half, this is all full coverage from here down. I've never done anything full coverage, going to be interesting. Um, but anyway, I got a fat half of this and thanks to Jan, she helped me locate some because this is not apparently a very common linen. I really wanted 40 count because it's so flipping big. Could not find 40 to save me. So this is 36 count. I got a fat half of that from Fire Poppies in, um, South Carolina. And then I went to, I had about half of the DMCs already in my, I have a full set of DMC and of most colors, I have also a backup skein. You know, the rest of it is bobbinated and in my little boxes. So I've got about half of them put on floss drops and I have the other, hence why I needed to order those floss drops from Ann. Anyway, I went to, to Hobby Lobby and got the rest of the DMC because this is a big piece and I wanted to start with a full skein of everything on that. And while I was at Hobby Lobby, I thought this was a pretty, little trim to use on a pillow. So I got that too. That was all my haul, which was plenty. I didn't need any more than that, but that was it. Oh, and if y'all want to see something ridiculous, I really had no, no concept of what this was going to be like when I, um, sorry, I've got the floss tube itchy nose, but I, I don't do well with, um, trying to match up pages of a pattern, I have to almost print the whole thing and put it together because just spatially, it's difficult for me to stitch it one page at a time. So I'm gonna hold this way back here because it's the pattern and it's upside down apparently, but still going, still going and still going. And there's the end. So here, there's my pattern. I may have to
try to break this one down a little one. I also am typically a center start starter, but I think I'm probably going to start in a corner on this one. Um, and I think I want to start maybe, maybe at the bottom because that's where all that pretty seamy is down there. So we'll see how that goes. But here's my ridiculous <laughs> pattern for this. I print, you know, it came in you know, however many, 12, I think, parts PDF. So I just printed them all out and taped them together. Um, I just didn't realize quite how ludicrously big it was going to be when I got done with it. That's a lot of pattern. Okay, so what that brings us to is giveaways. Oh, one other thing about plans. Um, Dovey Crowfoot, who I believe is Montana Stitcher on Instagram, sent me a large um, stash of things. She had called from her stash for me to give away from y'all. And in there was this one called Morning Star from Blackbird Designs, which if I look at this, I don't look at that and go, wow, I love it. But I saw this on, I think it was the fans of Blackbird Designs page on Facebook a few weeks ago and commented on somebody's um, finish there and said, gosh, that's beautiful. I really am going to have to look for that. And Dubby said, look in that stuff I sent you. I think you have it. And sure enough, I looked through it. And I had not paid any attention to it because I don't, I don't love it like this. The colors are just not vibrant enough for me. But whoever had finished it and showed their finish on that Facebook group, it was just gorgeous. So I am going to kit this up. She was nice enough to share her conversion with me. And I'm going to kit this up as that and, and do this. So this one will be started fairly soon. So that's Morning Star from Blackbird Designs. I do not know if this one is still available or if it's out of print. Okay, that's all my stuff. So now let's talk about giveaways. We had four giveaways from last week. And for the giveaways, please be a subscriber. Pretty please, y'all. I love to see my subscriber numbers go. I don't sit there and, and slave over it and, you know, just derive my self-worth from how many subscribers I have, but it's fun and it's fun to share with y'all. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, please do like the video, please be over 18 years old. So it's legit for me to get your address. I don't want to be arrested for soliciting a minor and, um, then, you know, use whatever keyword I give you. Don't use giveaway, freebie, gift. Don't use things like that. Um, cause we want people who actually want the things to get the things. So the first giveaway from last time, this is Winter Gathering from Brenda Gervais. This is the one I'm going to try to finish into the little semicircle pillow. And remember, I only did the top half. I did not do the basket. And I cannot even imagine trying to finish this into this shape. I would just lose my tiny little mind. Um, but the winner for this one, uh, I used the random comment picker thing. And that one came up as Jenny Draper, D-R-A-P-E-R. So Jeannie, if you will please email me at lesliedhurley at gmail.com and, um, you know, show me, um, or send me your, tell me what you want, put floss tube in the subject line, tell me what you want and send me your snail mail address. I will get this mailed out. Now, full disclosure, I'm probably not going back to the post office till after Christmas. <laughs> I'm not a crowd person. And you would, I live in a town of about 1,500 people. There are crowds here, too. Okay, the next giveaway, this is Jolly Soul from Erica Michaels. And this is also one that Dubby um, shared to give away. And the winner for this one is Carolyn121. So, Carolyn, if you will email me again, lesliedhurley at gmail.com. Lost tube in the subject line. Tell me you won Jolly Sold and send me your mailing address. This will go out to you. This was another one from Dubby. I Hear the Bells from Hands On Design. And the winner for this one is Margaret Yoder. So, Margaret, same thing. Email me. Lost tube in the subject line. Tell me you won I Hear the Bells and send me your mailing address. And then the last giveaway from last week. This is the little bag. Dubby also sent these. Um, this is a Deborah Harry's bag. It's brand new. Still got the tag on it. And the winner for this one is Sherry. I'm sorry. I can't read my own writing. Shelly. Shelly 
Crouch. Shelly, again, email me and I will mail that to you. So that's all of last week's or three weeks ago's from the last episode. That's all of those giveaways. But we have some more for today. So, like I said, ah, this is my pre-printed copy of Forest Snowman from Doreen Jones. And I'm just going to trifold this up and mail it out to you. So, if you are interested in winning this one, um, use the word forest, F-O-R-E-S-T. Again, be over 18, be a subscriber, like the video, comment using the keyword I give you. This is um, Snow Globe Mantle, and this is part two of three. There's part one, part two, and part three. This is part two. It does include the flosses there with it. So if you would like to win this one, again, thanks to Debbie, um, comment and use the word mantle, M-A-N-T-L-E. More goodies from Debbie. This is Snow Mini Friends from Misty at Luminous Fiber Arts. And let's use the word friends, F-R-I-E-N-D-S, if you're interested in winning this one. This is the one I just finished stitching for my grandson, Parker Stocking from Shepherd's Bush. Um, I couldn't think of another word, so we're going to go with the word Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, -E if you're interested in that one. I am going to include my working copy with it. I'm, I just don't believe in why should I throw it away to go in the landfill when I can save you paper and ink. And then lastly, this is my Stitcher's Heart, also thanks to Debbie, from Hands On Design. So if you're interested in, in winning this one, use the word heart, H-E-A-R-T. Thank y'all all so much for coming to visit with me. I sure appreciate you. I'm, I'm so glad to share my needlework with you. I hope um, I won't see you again before Christmas. I'm virtually certain of that. I, I might see you before the new year. We'll see how that goes. Um, regardless, though, I hope you have a merry, blessed Christmas. I hope you enjoy your family and get to spend time with them and... Um, recognizing that um, they can't cancel Christmas because of supply chain issues, because Christmas is what you carry in your heart. And I wish y'all all the joy of that. And if I don't see you before the new year, I wish you a prosperous and healthy and wonderful 2022. I will see y'all soon. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.